All right, Brian, it looks like we're live. I just want to give it a couple of minutes to alert people that we are live and get some folks to be tuning in to our live stream. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, of course. Looks like we've got Brian Dice already and a couple other folks. So we'll just go ahead and get started. Good morning and happy Tuesday, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to our COVID-19 series. As you all are aware, hopefully by now, I am Juliette Abdel, President and CEO of the Westminster Chamber of Commerce. And if you've landed on this page after seeing someone share the video or the, you know, the get reminder and alert for you to tune in, then be sure that you like our page and you follow us so you can also receive those alerts. You also have access to previous videos that we've recorded. If you go to the video section of the Facebook, we don't remove those, so you can go back as far as, I think over a month ago, whenever we kicked these off. But we've got different topics for you that center around um, different education that you can learn as a business owner, from e-commerce, virtual meetings, to how to have an online ordering platform and others. We feature our mayor on Monday with an update and a and information about the city of Westminster. And then we conclude the week with state electeds or county elected officials to share what they're doing in wake of COVID-19. In between, we have some pretty awesome and dedicated experts like we have today um, that share with us about a particular topic. These topics have developed from the surveys um, that we've conducted out to our entire business community. They've developed from comments that we've heard from the public and various um, DMs that we get on here it might be a topic or a suggestion. So I'm excited to have Brian Poole with us today. He's with Government Performance Solutions. And I've known Brian for, I think it's over a year and a half now, because time flies, and it feels like yesterday, but I'm pretty sure it's been that long. Um, but Brian has been an exceptional um, business owner, a leader in our community. He does a lot with strategic planning for different entities at the government level, um, all the way to nonprofit organizations. So. Today's topic is really focused around creating a positive work environment or a positive culture, really, while we're working remotely, when we have this whole COVID that's hanging around us. But if you're a business owner, if you're an employee of a business and you want to contribute to a better environment and atmosphere, how can we do that? And so he's going to show us some of those tools and resources to get us started once I shut my mouth. So <laughs> I'll go ahead and do so now. Ryan, you can take it away and I will pull up your PowerPoint presentation. Oh, I think um, I think I've lost Brian, it looks like. So let's see if we can't get him. Are you ready to go do it? Yes. Are you still on here? It's like it's frozen here. It's frozen, but if you're still, if you can still hear me, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Okay, there you are. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. Challenging situation, most of us who are in the business community. And uh, the this from a um, situational perspective, we've got most traditional organizations right now have just been completely. And, uh, and the interrupted supply chains. So what's interesting though is the new normal and, um, and, and providing some, some ideas. So strategies and capabilities and uh, and aligning those with what your customers employees and stakeholders all need and so um, I'll give you a four or five scenarios here where uh, where you can walk through with maybe fresh eyes and look at this situation as an opportunity to really uh, be a catalyst for positive change and, and engaging your teams so some of the goals that we might uh, believe are, are normal out there trying to improve the morale right now where uh, where your teams are and how they're how they're looking at the situation 
some enhanced team cohesion. Uh, everyone's dispersed in their own living rooms and uh, as we are today. And, uh, and trying to find a way to really connect with them on a human level is so important. At the same time, we want to try to reduce some of the resources that are required to operate in this environment, time, money, and so on, and ultimately really reduce that customer churn and even employee turnover that might happen as a result of this disruption. So um, if, if those are some simple common goals that a lot of businesses have, let's, uh, let's dive into some of the, the next uh, areas there on the next slide. So what's interesting here is when we think about working remotely, um, this is a great article I got from Inc. Magazine. They uh, distilled it down just to some key points here. But, but the, there's three blocks that really matter. And one of those is you've got to take care of yourself first before you can take care of others. So just like on the airplane when you have to put your mask on before your, uh, your little kid's mask, uh, here we want to take care of ourselves so that you can take care of others. Um, and then we want to tend to morale like, like you mean it. Um, if you really think morale is important and you want to improve that, uh, that situation, then you've got to take some positive and specific steps. You can't just uh, can't talk the talk, right? And then the third area is over communication, just simply uh, focusing on where we might have been able to assume things or quickly visually check on things. Uh, sometimes that's not possible now in the new, in the new normal. And so you really have to take an extra step to over communicate with your team. Uh, if you if you hope to stay on the same page. So some of the, the key ones here is cut yourself and your team some slack, um, take those breaks and protect your even your ergonomics, make sure that you're comfortable. Um, and then some of the morale ones that are really interesting here and I would like to emphasize is using video even if you're uncomfortable, um, taking time for some um, water cooler chats and, and staying aligned with your culture. And then on the communication, I think what's really interesting here is the last two on the bottom, you know, finding a way to create a video connection with your team remotely and, uh, and creating a system for sharing and updating documents in real time. Whatever that is, you need to find a way to, uh, to make that physical connection to the, to the work that they're doing and the place they are. And any questions on this so far? Not yet. You know, we've got some pretty neat people that are tuned in. Um, thanks so much for jumping on, Nick and Robin. Good morning to you guys as well. So let's just keep on pulling through. Sounds good. Okay. So the next idea that we've we've seen really uh, on the next slide is this idea of collaborating online. So as I mentioned, finding a common system for sharing and updating your documents while your team is working remotely uh, has to be a priority as we look ahead. So uh, on slide four here, we've got this idea around collaborating online. And you know, as a, as a person who does a lot of retreats and stra strategy sessions and so on, we often maybe have one or two full day retreats and things. And uh, I think now as we're in this new environment and everybody's got multiple uh, competing mm -hmm. pressures both at home and, um, and, and virtually, uh, that we're trying to shorten any of these sessions. You know, something that might have been three hours can now probably needs to be done in one hour or less or uh, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And uh, you lose some of the quality in this, but trying to keep people on uh, for many, many hours just doesn't seem to work. We all lose our attention span eventually. So um, the next one is more frequent. So if we have shorter ones, we can simply have more frequent ones to make up a little bit of that. And again, mm -hmm. break, up, um, break up some of the work. We want to make sure we're publishing that material ahead of time, we're giving folks a chance to really marinate on it, and, um, and then capturing the feedback from in real time from the team in the chat, for example, or in other vehicles, and, and putting that out. One, one area I want to highlight, uh, and we've just started to use this at our firm in the last few weeks, is this, uh, it's a free software basically for small users anyway, uh, called Note App. And uh, it's really fun for somebody who lives and works in the collaboration world and is using you know, different colored stickies on the wall and, and driving conversations or whiteboarding different uh, conversations and driving, uh, driving to conclusions and decisions. Um, this can be really kind of difficult in the visual world um, online. But if you have this app, it's pretty interesting. You combine this with a Zoom or something else to cover the video. And then it's actually a real time wall board, if you will, or white, uh, white space. And you're able to click and drop in new stickies, resize them, add text, add uh, different images, and so on. Um, and really, sort of, and everyone's seeing this all happen in real time. They can interact with the board and add new stickies at the same time as you um, and explain their idea and how these things are connected. 
Um, and it's just a very simple thing. Uh, people have been learning it in about three or four minutes how to, how to run it. Um, and now they're helping us design a new process. So uh, think of this as a, a, a free tool or a free way that you can uh, quickly get some visuals and get a different level of interaction than simply another PowerPoint um, or, or, or a streamer uh, voice. This is a way they can interact with the work in real time. Um, and it's pretty fun. So yeah. Uh, Any questions about that one? No, this is awesome. I love sticky notes, so it's nice to see that there is right. a virtual Let's ones go that are on out to the next there. One. This is a, a different view of this. You know, one of the things that we're thinking about um, in in this this day and age is the language that we use. So leaders uh, have a challenge to try to communicate some of the more uh, impactful things, maybe even the more uh, threatening to the long term viability of the business. Uh, also have the opportunity to inspire the team, right, and lift them up and, and push them into a new place. And I just have three kind of takeaways here. This was from Harvard Business Review recently, looking at some of the communication and uh, and challenges that the government is having communicating what to do about the coronavirus. And one of the things we notice here is, for example, personalizing the message. So you may have a very serious message and you've got to get this across, um, but personalizing that shows that you you personally care about it and can connect to it. And it's a model for the other people and your team to connect to that in a unique way. And the example I have here is uh, Dr. Burks. You may have seen her on some of these um, news conferences around the virus. And she, in the beginning, was trying to emphasize that she understood so much about social distancing and how that was important. And she gave the example, uh, which was very personal to her, about her grandmother, who was a teenager in the Spanish flu days, and ended up bringing home the Spanish flu to her house, exposing her own mother or her great grandmother in this case uh, to the virus. And she, she passed away because of that. And so she said that her grandmother knew growing up how important social distancing was. And she used that story as, as heart wrenching as it is uh, to make that personal connection that she wasn't just uh, uh, in the ivory tower here saying these words, that this had already impacted her personally. And so I think thinking about how you choose your words and personalize the story that you've got for your business right now, uh, this can really help. And it, and it, it allows you to, to present the, a real side of you and, and really encourage your staff and teams to con connect with their real sides as well as they work out some of the issues. Right. Um, the second main theme here when, when you're communicating and choosing your words to, uh, to, to speak with your team is thinking about how to condense that into simpler language. Um, you know, the old $5 words are, this is probably not the time to show off that you uh, that you know and have a fantastic vocabulary. It's really a time to speak in direct and, and, uh, and, and clear terms. Um, this One of the, a version of this that's really important is the rule of three, if you remember that. When you're communicating things to teams that are complicated and scary, uh, one of the best ways to think about this is to break it down into the beginning, the middle, and the end, or the, the step one, two, and three, or some of those types of things, and it allows the human brain and the psychology there to really work through those issues and understand what um, what they're going, what what how to sequence them, how to process them, how to put them in those compartments in the brain so that you're comfortable uh, and can move on and, and actually can re-communicate that to other folks as well. So uh, we know in the rule, the game of telephone, the message gets lost after one or two speakers. So um, being simple and short, uh, in your language really prevents the corruption of that message as it gets further down the line. Um, mm -hmm. And then the third area that I, I love to focus on myself, I'm a, a big believer in analogies. Um, finding an apt analogy is really the art here, so we can't just grab the first one off the shelf, but um, thinking about what are those mental shortcuts that people can use to, uh, to process and, and, and structure some of the complex and challenging things that are happening around them. And, uh, one of the analogies that I've seen people use for the virus and so on is, is there's a fire, right? And mm -hmm. the fire is spreading. Um, and you've seen this in the matchsticks and other um, um, types of scenarios. So, so the analogy of fire and how it's spread, similar to a virus, people can relate to that, they can process that, and they can understand that there's an urgency that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so finding a way to act, persuade people to act quickly can often hinge just on the paradigm or the structure of the uh, of the idea, and that can often come from an analogy. So be thinking about those. Great. All right. Here's a fun a fun thing you can do. So you can use the language you've got. Uh, you can use some of the the tips and so on that I've mentioned, and maybe the technology and so on. 
but what is the content? What is the what is it you can really produce as a team to respond to this? And so here's this idea of a scamper workshop. And scamper is just an acronym, uh, and it really means to do to guide a group through a brainstorm, essentially to imagine or readapt or adjust an idea. Uh, and this idea could be anything. Could be your business plan. Could be pricing. Could be products. Could be channels. Uh, could be communication or really anything that your business is involved with. Um, and the idea here is to, to look at each uh, potential way to adapt or, or, mm -hmm. or innovate um, with a special lens. And, and the SCAMPER acronym starts with a substitute. And the idea here is that there's something that you're using in your supply chain, perhaps, something that you have to produce in the, as a product uh, or maybe a resource that you have or don't have. And you challenge the team through a series of questions. And, and I've got a bunch of questions in the appendix of this document that, uh, that Julia can share with everyone. But, but the mm -hmm. idea is to prompt the team in a real live setting or on using your note app um, as to what we could use to substitute for maybe a missing product or something slipping in the supply chain or there's delays or skills that are missing. And so you really focus the debate and the, and the brainstorm around this idea of a substitution. And that means they're taking something away and put something back that's slightly different. Uh, the second scenario, if that if substitute doesn't produce a good result, you can look to ask them to combine. And the idea here is you have two parts of your supply chain, two parts of your, your service mix, for example. Is there a way to combine them? Um, mm -hmm. And so there you may be able to essentially push together two parts of this. And an example of that might be, um, you know, uh, the, the city of Denver changed the, the laws uh, in sort of the Colorado where you could actually combine alcohol delivery with, uh, with food delivery from a restaurant during the, during the shutdowns. And so here you were able to push this product out there that uh, was, was previously not available to be combined on, on a takeout basis. Um, the third area is adapt. Uh, so here's a new thing if you have a challenge or not be able to reach your customers in a certain way. Uh, these questions, it, you'll see later, but they're going to force you to say, all right, what are some ways that we could adapt? What is the, is it the technology, the process, the people, the training, uh, the product? You know, which of those can we adapt and sort of breaking down that conversation for you? And an example of this I've heard of recently is some restaurants are, uh, instead of just doing the takeaway service or takeout, uh, they're actually putting together meal kits at their restaurant where the, per where the folks can take home those component pieces, mm -hmm. cook those up at home, and it's more of an experience. Um, it's actually less work on the, on the, uh, on the restaurant in some ways, uh, but they're still getting credit for prepping that meal kit and, and creating a unique experience for the customer. So um, here's a chance to say, well, we've never done that before, but we can adapt by, uh, by, pro by presenting the products differently, in, in this case, un uncooked. Um, the fourth area on Scamper is modify. Also, we talk about magnify and minify. And here's a scenario where you, you think about what, what can we modify within the product, especially making it larger or more prominent or smaller and less prominent. And the idea here is you've got to compensate a little bit for the change in the service model that you have or what your customer preferences are. And you're able to really overemphasize, if you will, one aspect of your service. Um, and under uh, uh, emphasize others, if you will. So if you had relied heavily on insert in, in restaurant service, now you're going to uh, shift and magnify more heavily on uh, trying to do uh, delivery, for example, and finding new models and new ways to get your product mm -hmm. out into the, uh, in the market, maybe new partners uh, and so on. So uh, again, trying to put a different lens on different parts of this business to force you through the, uh, well, force is probably a tough word, but to drive the conversation through uh, unique and, um, and special ways. Another area you can think about, the P in Scamper, is the put to another use. The idea here is that you're able to um, take something that does work in one area and repurpose it uh, in another market, in another industry, in another uh, situation. So the mm -hmm. idea is to not just look at the folks that you've served uh, or how you've served them, but maybe just take a fresh look at the phone book and say, who else out there might use our product in a different way um, and really brainstorm around that. And it might be stories that you've heard or, or engaging the teams, uh, but finding some way to use what you already do produce well in a, in a brand new market, essentially, that you, you maybe haven't prompted yourself to. Right. Uh, the, the E is for eliminate. I think everyone knows how this, but there are times when you just need to walk away from something. Uh, and we've seen um, some restaurants, for example, do that mm -hmm. and just say, 
I'm not going to even serve that market, but I am going to focus on this other one. So it's really collapsed the model uh, into something safer, tighter, more secure that does have some unit economics, and, uh, and you can push ahead with that. And then the last one is simply to reverse how you've been thinking. Maybe uh, everything in the customer mindset has been going one way, but we're really seeing them uh, scramble in another. So here's your chance to flip the model. Any questions on Scamper? We have questions. We're gonna. I'm gonna have you go and through these a little bit more, and then we'll okay. pull up uh, our comments. Well, I have one more uh, slide here. I want to share with you. Oh, actually, two more. Sorry, but the next one here is additional resources. I've li uh, linked to a couple of these in the other areas of this, but each of these is a really good article, short, you know, to the point, and really relevant within the last few weeks of saying, you know, how do we adapt? How do we look at our situation here and try to be more positive and forward-looking in the business? Uh, bringing folks together. So some of this is on culture, some of this is on, you know, what, what are some elements to survival and so on. Uh, but all of it should really help you kind of reposition the thinking and looking for on uh, looking forward on, on those ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll get this document out to everyone and you can use those links. And then um, I'll just finish on the, the last slide here. This is our firm, Government Performance Solutions. And uh, if you need to reach out to me, you've got my email and contact information there. And we'd be more than happy to, to, to work with any of you on questions that you may have. Well, awesome. Okay. So we do have some questions. Thank you so much for going through all of that. That was yeah. so succinct. Yeah. So we've got um, Stacey, or State Representative Tracy Kropthart. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we have Peter Brissett, who's also uh, sharing. Great to have you on here, Brian. Um, I know he's interfaced with you before, Sorry, so he's here. thankful. Sorry, for you. Yeah. Um, and then also looks like we have um, Brian Dice thanking you for coming on and sharing uh, a little bit from your business side with our community. We've got a couple other good mornings and um, we've got a comment of the sticky note. This is from Robin. She uses the online sticky notes and regular sticky notes all the time. Um, I know she works over with Highland Hills, so they're a larger um, entity and can, uh, can kind of do quite a bit. I, uh, I, can't I can hear you. Well. Juliet, you'll have to wrap us up. Thank you. Okay. Um, so then this last question I'm going to go ahead and post on here, and I'll have um, Brian answer it later, and that's kind of how much more effective uh, our video conferencing versus telephone conference calls. Yeah, I can see that. Like the ability to see. Do you want to go ahead and comment it to it? You, That's right. I hear you. That's right. Uh, I have not seen a lot of research on it, but we, uh, I imagine we're going to see a whole lot coming out right now. I think the anecdotal evidence is absolutely makes a big difference to be able to visually see people. Um, we've, when all the research I've done with my clients, they, they find it makes the biggest difference. So. Well, terrific. Um, and then we do have a question, it looks like from Carrie Ann. Yes, you can get a copy of this. We will make the presentation yep. available. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We'll make it available on our COVID-19 uh, update page on the Westminster Chamber website. Um, but then we'll also include that link for you here on our Chamber page. So um, you can just be able to pull that up as well. But thank you so much, Carrie, for, um, for that. And I'll go ahead and share with you the link of our website so you can have that as well. So thank you again to Brian uh, Poole with Government Performance Solutions. If you just hopped on and went over, you know, how do you continue to engage with your employees in the age of COVID and working remotely? What are some tools that are available that people can still engage with one another? You know, he shared the fun sticky note concept that's out there. Um, and then he touched about how can you effectively communicate based on whatever industry you're in, how can you effectively communicate to your employees in the time of crisis, the words that you can use, effective tone, effective messaging, and things like that. And then he wrapped us up with a nice variety of resources that are available and out there that any industry can leverage for their benefit. Um, we had some questions. The question that related to video conferencing, yes, there is a huge difference between video conferencing and telephone conference calls, while the re uh, research has been lacking. Um, I know he will come back and comment on that, Brian, head a little bit further. So I appreciate everybody for taking the time to be on this broadcast with us. We have another one scheduled tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. 
This one is focused on business and politics. So what you can probably expect when legislative session kicks off, things for you to keep in mind. It's hosted by Laura Long, who's one of our two lobbyists at the state capitol with We Capital Group. So we'll see you here tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Thank you so much for tuning in to our video today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning. Bye.